Welcome back Dota 2 fans, this is our fourth and final game of the day in the Bright and Open League And this is Group D, of course, a very tight group uh, thus far I am Orange Peace, your resident Canadian Dota 2 caster Joined by none other than the wise and insightful man himself, Mr. Black Adder. We are Hefla TV, your English coverage Black, any preliminary thoughts on this matchup? Well, I'm thinking we're in for a lot of the normal right now. I mean, bands out in Juggernaut, Troll Warlord, we get a first pick axe. I think we're going to be in for some small-scale skirmishes, which will most likely decide the mid-game quite rapidly, and if axe can get an early blink dagger. Yeah, definitely will be certainly the pivotal uh, moment or in the game or interval will be that mid game with the early axe pickup coming out from Aspera was something quickly uh, to note that Hakon has been playing with Aspera guys for quite a while now, quite a while now. He was formerly of Cleave, which is now disbanded. Uh, Xantic or Little Busters Forever do have what seems to be their full squad for most of the tournament. So both teams playing with a full arsenal and this will be very indicative of how the group is going to pan out here after only one more day in Group D coverage, Aspera currently leading at a record of 2-1. and one. So if they take 3-1 and one here, they'll be above both Album Sheet and London Conspiracy. We will see the Faceless Void picked up for Aspera to couple up with that axe. Not the greatest synergy between the two heroes, but definitely uh, two uh, very nice tempo-controlling heroes in the team fight. A little bit of elusivity going to go the way of LB4E. They're going to pick up the Slark along with their AA. Indeed, these combinations so far, i got to say, they don't have the kind of synergy that we normally see in a 1-2 picks, but what do I expect to come out next? Ban phase, obviously, Witch Doctor banned by Little Busters. They don't really want to mess with the Void and a Witch Doctor. We may even see a ban right. on the Chikiro as well, considering Macropire is quite nice in combination with the Faceless Void, but what are Team Aspera going to ban? Considering there's a Slark, an AA... Anything that gives global vision. I mean, I personally, ban on the Nature's Prophet does come to mind. Or the Zeus. Both of these are quite nice in combination with an AA. But it'll be a ban on the Viper instead. So taking away the controlling heroes. Yeah, definitely not the most ideal target for an axe or a void to jump in on as well with that corrosive skin. Is pretty tangy. Interestingly enough, Aspera ban out the Omni themselves. Purification into Chronosphere is pretty nice early on for some kill potential. Also, axe with a repel is really OP as well. And GA, not too bad against the Stark. Of course, he does have the magic damage toolkit from the Pounce and the Dark Pact early on. And there is a, that AA Ice Blast to mitigate any healing. So, understandably so, they'll ban out the Omni, but feel like it would have worked decently uh, with their lineup. LB4, are you going to finish out here with a Lion Ban? Uh, what do you expect the support duo to be from them? Hmm. Well, you've got an Ancient Apparition. Any hard stun is good with right. the AA, so Rubik could be good. Vengeful Spirit is not banned out, I'll point out, and is very, very popular in the current meta. Uh, it does also work quite nicely with AA, the Aura applying quite nicely in combination with Chilling Touch. Yep, and it is great into the Chronosphere as well. So Vengeful Spirit should be definitely on the minds of LB4E coming into this phase. But we'll see if they expend uh, this pick. As you mentioned, definitely a hero highly uh, coveted by many teams. And falling through to this third phase, it should probably be insta-picked by LB4E. But they are going to take a little bit of their reserve time and think this one over. Hmm. If they don't pick up the Venge here, then... I highly expect Aspera to, to pick it up. I mean, it's not like these guys to leave something like the Venge when it's, well, fully available. And what would you then combo with the Venge for Aspera? You already got your Axe, who's going to be in the 3 4 role. You've got the Void. Mm -hmm. You're looking for a mid hero and an off lane plus someone who can run. But there's the Venge. It's going to be for Little Busters. So, Venge, AA as your support combo. Slark. This could possibly be the tri lane. We're looking for a solo and an off lane for Little Busters, and it'll be an Ember for a Spirit. Yeah, uh, well called by yourself there. Definitely a nice pickup. Will be good early on if they can get the Venge in range for that Magic Missile into a Pounce with those Chilling Touch right clicks. Very strong defensive try, and even an aggressive one if they choose to go that route. But Aspera going to be a little bit tunnel vision in their draft in the sense that they'll pick up the three cores, one, two, three, so only supports left for them unless they opt to go greedy and jungle this axe. But thus far, looks like we will have that safe lane void, mid lane, Ember, and the axe in the offlane. A lot of initiation potential uh, coming out from these three heroes and definitely some really mid-game potency coming out from the Ember and the Axe. 
yeah, that's quite the scary mid game as well. But I can't see it being a greedy role with the axe and the junk for the most part because yeah. you've got Ventral Spirit and AA that can punish it so easily. And there's the Tide Hunter to give some team fight control. Instant pick of the Rubik, however. I love this. It is few and far between where we see good Rubik's and a good Rubik up against a Tide that Ravage may be Rubik's instead. Yeah, there's a lot to steal here. The Ventral Spirit definitely considered widely the Swiss Army knife of support. So much she offers in the way of the minus armor, the disable, as well as that positioning element in the swap. So Rubik should have a good time finding some impactful spells uh, throughout this mid game. In terms of the bands, we'll see the Storm Spirit uh, banned out from Aspera, so denying up a little bit of initiation power, as well as that Orchid, which is very good uh, versus the Ember and the Void. So they'll ban that out, which is a wise ban for sure, and uh, Disruptor will be removed from the pool by Aspera, or by LB4E, mm. I should say. I do like the ban on the Disruptor, considering they were looking for another support on mm. Aspera's lineup that could control the battlefield, and one of the best ways to do that is with the Glimpse, just to be able to get pickoffs. And, of course, Disruptor up against Tidehunter. Kraken Shell is good and all, but against Static Storm, Static Storm wins. Yeah, certainly so. And and the Glimpse is nice uh, versus a lot of their initiation power, like with the Swap, with the Pounce in, the Blink in from the Tide as well. So not a terrible hero at all uh, for Aspera to couple up with their lineup. Um, wouldn't have been too bad for LB4E to pick up themselves, but that would have been having to put a Venge into a core role, which is certainly not ideal. And they'll probably look, uh, as you mentioned earlier, for a mid laner with this last pickup. Hmm. As for mid laners, hmm, if unless it's a mid slark, we could be looking at actually a storm spirit. If it's not banned out, no, it's a banned out by uh, banned out by a spirit in the last one. I was going to say storm would be good up against an ember. Mm -hmm. Other options we could look for here, puck. I would very much get behind a puck. Yeah, a puck is certainly possible. The waning rift is very nice into the ember, but is a little bit susceptible to that berserker's call from the axe. As is queen of pain, but it does offer them some nice pure damage. Uh, nuke. If you get a ravage off and a couple target sonic wave, that could be a very detrimental. Interesting pickup here coming out uh, from the side of a sparrow. They're going to pick up the. Visage in the fifth pick to come up with that Rubik. That's a very strong uh, tri-lane duo. And in fact, Visage, something that's fallen quite out of favor uh, more often than not recently. It's fallen out of favor, but it certainly can do a lot of work here. And if we get a tri-v-tri -tri -tri scenario, yeah. Visage, just like Undying, can destroy a tri-lane just with all those soul assumption charges. But the Queen of Pain here for Little Busters, I was thinking Puck for the sole purpose of three melee on a Spira's lineup, get yeah. a good silence going. It would be golden. But Queen of Pain, pure damage, high nuking capabilities against those melee heroes, that can obliterate a Spira's lineup if played well. Yeah, and I think you touched on the key point there. That it's It relies on a, a matter of execution here because uh, Queen of Pain is certainly susceptible uh, to things like the Call and the Chronosphere. She can blink out th from things like the Searing Chains, but uh, she will be... I'm hard pressed to position herself here, but certainly a feast or famine pick can work out uh, very well uh, for LB4E, but can also uh, play into the hand of Aspera. Chopping into the game, I'll introduce the Radiant side. We do have Little Busters Forever currently sitting at one and two in last place. Looking to pick themselves up here, the Rise to take in towards the off lane on the Tide Hunter. In the mid lane, we've got Akashi playing on Akasha, the Queen of Pain, and towards that safe lane defensive try, FN picking up the one position, Slark ZJK on the Ancient Apparition and Rakuzin on the Vengeful Spirit. Of course, on the flip side of that coin for the Aspera lineup, on the Rubik, we've got Vaxa. I'm probably going to butcher some of these names in Russian. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. We've got, <laughs> as far as I understand, it's Metrum on the uh, on the Visage. Then over towards the Faceless Void, we've got Hakon. I know this guy. He's been playing mm -hmm. all too long, and I've cast him many a time. Strong player, and I look forward to what he can do with this Offlane Void in this case. Then on the Axe, we have the Apathy, a nice easy one for us. And finally, over on the Ember Spirit, we've got Sharfik. Yep, Sharfik certainly uh, very capable with this Ember Spirit. It's one of these heroes that I would consider signature for him. He has had some pretty poor games recently in Bryden, but overall I've uh, been able to cast quite a few good games with him. On that Ember Spirit, looks like we will trade one for one bounty runes. Generally, uh, that is the case in competitive Dota. So one going the way of Rakuzan and the other going the way of Sharfik's Ember Spirit will give him a little bit of an advantage mid, but uh, should be a pretty good matchup for this Queen of Pain, albeit the Flame Guard is there but that range advantage so it should secure her some good CS. Hmm. If she can get a good start, this is going to be absolutely perfect for her, but it can still be a bit of a hairy matchup. As long as she punishes the Ember, though, it should be good. 
Yeah, definitely. So we will not see that try versus try setup. The rise is going to be aggressed upon bottom. Vaxa walking forward. The grave chill is there, but it looks like it's just going to be some harass at this point. Telekinesis back will be there, but the rise just going to have to perhaps burn through his south here. It does have eight tangos, so it should be just fine in terms of stability. Sharfik dropping really low mid uh, to that shadow strike and a few right clicks, but he is going to be able to salve up here. And Hakon looking just fine to stay in lane for now. Yeah, but I'm going to keep my eye on the mid lane because this is where I expect the action to happen. Hakon mm -hmm. should be okay as long as he plays defensive and he does have time loop now so he can just escape if necessary. But this mid lane, Akashi, if he can just keep punishing Sharpik, this is just pure gold. I mean, I'm watching uh, the Queen of Pain and the, uh, the movements that we're seeing so far. Just throwing the, uh, the dagger into Sharfik on occasion and mm -hmm. using it to CS as well. I've seen twice used to just grab a CS at this point. And the CS control mid lane 9 and 2 up against 4 and 0. Yeah, doing very well is Akashi, and uh, definitely one of the heroes is Queen of Pain that really relies on the ability uh, to snowball and pick up an early like item like uh, that Naked Orchid Rush, and in this game, it certainly will do a lot of work, so this bodes well thus far for LB4E. Unfortunately, the Rise has been zoned completely out of lane on that Tide Hunter, and he's going to look to stack up some Ancients to recover his farm, maybe a little bit late on this stack, and I feel that he will, unfortunately for him, but either way, uh, should be a decent recovery mechanic for him later on. Hakon having to time walk out a bot lane and he'll be just fine for the time being mm. it's an interesting set of matchups but uh, we could see a first blood of mid if they're not careful akashi taking one more right click could bring her down but not the case we're going to see a turnaround and some damage thrown encountered it's it's pretty even across the board right now this mid lane both horrendously low yeah bottle does come out now for sharfik so he'll have some stability there bottle and a salve on the way for akashi a little bit far behind and Metrum gonna run into the rise here. Icy Vortex is there. Berserker's call not quite in range. Uh, no level in the battle hunger quite yet for the Apathy to chase down uh, that Tide Hunter. ZJK gonna get Telekinesed up to the high ground though. The call is there, but there are no units. They should still have the kill potential with a few more right clicks. One more range attack needed. ZJK able to make it out with those boots first. Advantage and no one able to chase him down from the side of Aspera. Mm. A well-played little flurry there coming from both sides. Being able to escape that one was good. Even setting up on the side of Aspera, mm. almost getting that kill. Quite nice, just couldn't follow through, unfortunately. But, uh, back in the mid lane, a little bit of a scuffle going on, but the bottles are now out. I'm, I'm thinking we're just going to see the bottle crowing unless we see a unforced error. I think this mid lane is now stagnant after these bottles are up. Yeah, it seems like a wash, uh, unless, as you mentioned, there's a misstep from either side. Berserker's Call goes out top lane onto the rise. Vaxa not quite able to get in range for that Telekinesis. And Tidehunter sitting at level 2 does have that Anchor Smash for that little bit more of tankiness now and should be uh, just fine. Hakon finding CS in the off lane. He's got 10 CS up against the 1 of the rise Tidehunter. He'll find a couple under the tower here, but Hakon having a much better time in the off lane for Aspera. The CS is a marginal thing to mention. More important is the levels. It's a level 4 void up against a level 2 Tide Hunter in terms of the offlane heroes. It's quite a, a painful thing. And Arise does get called. He's going to be the first blood. There's no chance. Matram will take the kill. Yep, that's nice going into the hands of the Visage. We'll see if he's able to transition later into something like an Agnum's. We'll pick up his boots from the side shop. And Aspera getting on the board four minutes in. Pretty passive early game thus far. But as you mentioned, it looks like an advantage is being a in more or less all three lanes by Aspera. The mid lane, somewhat of a wash at this point. If they can keep building smaller bunches, though, it's going to be completely fine unless this Queen of Pain can come online and in a big way. Mm -hmm. She needs to start repairing around the map as soon as she really can. And Honestly, she's got the Invis room. She is capable of, of doing it now, but we're going to see Sharfik try to go aggressive as well. He can punish now with the Ember Guard. He's got three points up in it and two in chains, so... If uh, Akashi is not careful, he could be on the receiving end of a barbecue. Yeah, it needs to be very diligent and disciplined with this blink no. here. Only the level 1 in it is a pretty long cooldown. So definitely not use that for initiation purposes into a Searing Chains. Will be uh, really detrimental oh. to the Queen of Pain. Hakon going to trade up some blows with FN bottom lane as his supports are out of lane pushing or pulling, I should say. And we do see the Vengeful rotate over towards the mid. But Sharfik, uh, pretty defensively postured right now. Doesn't look like they'll find any aggression on him. 
Hmm. Akashi can't really go aggressive either at this point. I mean, sure, he's full health, bottle crowing as much as he can, but one misstep with the Queen of Pain and you're at the receiving end of an Ember Guard slash Searing Chains. Yeah. It, it's just a wash, as you say. It is very tight, very close in terms of CS, not so much though. 14 CS for the Ember, 32 for 14 for the Queen of Pain. CS-wise, the Queen has it, and that's going to be the first kill to her as well. With I'm that Scream of Pain invested, there's just no stop? way to survive that kind of pure damage these days. Yeah, well played, and uh, good diligence to keep the mana pool uh, in check. Is able to burn down Sharfix Ember. Ember almost found the level 6, so didn't quite have that remnant. But that gives over 7.5 to Akashi, so that will definitely help her transition into this mid-game and perhaps pick up that early Orchid. The Apathy looking for a call top lane, but the Rise able to back out in time. And Hakon with the Chronosphere does have his Rubik rotating in with that Fade to commit but no treads quite yet on Hakon don't know that they have the kill potential on FN especially when he's got that shadow dance to pop immediately after the chronosphere mm. they might be able to do it but they need to be able to put the chrono in such a position where the Rubik can also keep right clicking right and there'll be no kind of rotational punishment from the Zenatic lineup no VS coming in to swap no uh, no ancient apparition to come in with cold feet not that he's actually skilled cold feet he hasn't yeah. gone for it at all in fact mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he does have the Icy Vortex, but not going to do much versus a Stagnant Void. Just right-clicking. He does have three levels in the time lock, so a little RNG can uh, play a part here. But it looks like the Rubik going to rotate out of the lane for the time being. And we'll have rotations over towards the mid from the support duo of Xantic, as well as we've got the Rubik with a smoke wrapping around mid. But he's probably going to have this pop by ZJK. Meanwhile, Scream of Pain goes out mid lane. Sharfik going to use the Spirit Bomb, trying to man up against Akashi with the Chilling Touch there and the Wave of Terror, however. He will go down. Chronosphere does land on two. Fable goes through, and that'll kill off one. That's Akashi's Queen of Pain. Rakuzan dropping low. He'll throw a Magic Missile into the Rubik. Jump in, pounce. Dark Pack finishes off the Rubik. Hakon is out of mana and has Time Walk on cooldown. He will salve up from range, and that should keep him healthy for the time being but the icy vortex is their fn not with enough mana to find a pounce but a few more right clicks and they should be able to bring him down here he's going to tread swap to int looking for a time walk or a dark pact i should say and fn finishes him off here so a nice little trade despite losing their queen of pain overall for lb 4 e Indeed, being able to kill off that Void is a pretty damn big thing, considering he does have level 7, so it's quite a bit of experience being able to be picked up there by, mm -hmm. most importantly, the Slark. But now, part of me does wonder, what the hell were you on about when you said Spirit Bomb? What spell were you referring to with that one? As when Slark comes back in, FN trying to trade with Sharpnik. The Dark Pack is there, going to buy some time. Akashi comes in as well, Scream of Pain, of all oh, managed to be dodged by Sharpnik with the Remnant, that was quite the play there, but now in comes the Blink forward. Can't quite get the screen to finish him off, Akashi. Don't know most likely to go down here, but does manage to clean up one, but goes down in response to uh, Hakon's Faceless Void coming in with the final right click, but he's is still chopping down at Rakuzin. Rakuzin may be in a bit of trouble here, especially with uh, Vaxa, but they're going to have to back it up. Yeah, unfortunately, Akashi long enough just to get that Scream of Pain off and brought down Aspera very low overall. Ends up being a 2 for 2. Slark, Queen of Pain, Ember, Axe, about a completely even in the two cores uh, going either way. Spirit Bomb, I meant uh, when the Ember drops his three remnants and uh, activates them, it does the, each of them do a nuke damage. So that's what I was referring to. I see. <laughs> so, so that's a Spirit Bomb, is yeah. it? Does, does this also require some kind of yelling for a good 30 minutes beforehand <laughs> the dragon ball z reference coming out from mr black adder uh definitely something i grew up on so gotta love it but we will see yeah i mean i guess even mid lane going apathy still quite a ways off his blink dagger here uh still 250 gold away but has farmed decently well top in the cs chart at a 60 and 8. He's, he's been in the jungle, though, and the jungle it is always key to point out. They do mm -hmm. not give as much gold as, say, the lane. and It's still going to be an early blink, though. It's yeah. going to be a sub-10 minute blink. So, all in all, pretty damn good start for Aspira. And they did manage to uh, survive, for the most part, in that little engagement with the Queen of Pain, even investing her wave of t uh, her uh, Sonic Wave. Right. I mean, it was a very nice dodge coming out of the uh, Ember Spirit, but we are going to see a kill in that mid lane and it might even be a counter kill if isn't careful one more right click two more right clicks might be able to bring it down in favor of akashi but there is a remnant down he doesn't actually have enough mana though to activate the fire remnants and he's missing far too much a blink forward and a right click hell a blink forward and scream akashi will clean up the ember yeah a bit of overkill from akashi looking with that scream of pain but perhaps worried about activating that remnant towards the mid lane does finish it off and sharfik finds a solo kill on the ancient apparition but certainly feeding his life over to it for the queen of pain who's already 
doing very well. Not worth that trade. And Akashi, 986 gold uh, on her. Probably has an item up in the stash. Uh, actually completed the treads rather than going for that Naked Orchid rush. Uh, Naked Orchid has its place, but the treads just give you a nice boost in health yeah. and in damage. So I can understand why, in this case, Akashi wants to go for treads. I mean, it's going to be quite nice in combination with that DD rune. And she almost has her first Oblivion either way. So. Right. Yeah, and definitely is nice versus aggressive heroes like the Axe, the Ember, and the Void with having that uh, extra bit to your HP pool and stats. So certainly understandable uh, in this matchup. FN on the Sark looks like he'll build into a Shadow Blade. Does has picked up that amulet already, still uh, needing that Claymore. But I'm not sure that I really love this item on the Sark. I'm more of a fan of the Blink. But we'll see how it works out in this one there is that call and the chronosphere to drop over top an invisible slark if you see him pop it well if you can catch the invisible slark that would be nice and all but mm -hmm. the problem in my mind isn't the slark at this point the right. problem for them is akashi if akashi doesn't get caught in a chrono she can do so much damage yeah, certainly so. Apathy gonna whiff a call bot lane. He's gonna clean up FN's a creep wave. FN getting one there with the dark pack, but Ice Blast gonna fly through, not gonna hit on anyone. Shadow Dance was popped by FN, and Akashi doing a lot, but he'll be hit by the remnants and dunked up by the Apathy, and that is the problem with dropping yourself in the front lines as a Queen of Pain. Meanwhile, they will bring down the Ventral Spirit. Ravage is committed from the rise. Hack on getting low, uh, but he should be able to rotate out here. The Gush is down for three seconds. He'll time walk away. One last right click, not going to finish him off from the AA. Searing Chain's going to land onto two. Sharfik trying to jump out here, but he's going to fall, presumably, to this uh, sh Shadow Strike from the Queen of Pain. And will do so. So overall, two for one. Queen of Pain going down early. And the Ventral Spirit there. Hakon jumps in with a three-man chrono. And he's not able to bring down the rise, but a jump in dunk from the Apathy. Will finish things off. Scream of Pain, Sonic Wave on to two from Akashi. Bringing them both low, but able to get out is the Axe for now. Scream of Pain will be there. One more right click. Double kill going the way of the Queen of Pain. And overall, despite dying early, they'll find quite a few return kills for the side of LB4E. Mm. And this is the worrying thing that Aspera have to always keep in mind. The Queen of Pain is a very, very scary mid hero. It's one of the snowball heroes that can just get out of hand so damn quickly. But even going to go back in on Sharp at all, Sharp is going to have to remnant away. Doesn't really want to risk that one. The other thing to keep in mind the later this goes, they're also going to have to contend with the Slark. And the Slark is going for a Shadow Blade. So we're looking for a lot of early aggression from Xanth. Yeah. If Aspera can weather the storm, they can take this late. Ember, mm -hmm. Axe, Hell, Visage with anagonyms and a Void most importantly. Yeah. Late game power is there in favor of Aspera, but it's all up to Zanatic to do this early. Yeah, definitely so. Uh, they're going to try and secure a little bit of late game on their support. ZJK going to pick up a Hand of Midas. Definitely a common pickup for that AA. Uh, Agonims is certainly a coveted item on him. 17 second duration on that Ice Blast is very scary. But as you mentioned, Void, Axe, Ember, Tricor. Certainly nothing to shake a stick at in that uh, late game. And uh, going to be worried is the lineup of LB4E. But as you mentioned, Shadow Blade pickup here will start to cue some aggression for FN. He'll clean up this mid wave and should be very close if not there to picking up the shadow blade speaking of aggression though when they flip the coin aspera they have a smoke popped are they going to take the the roshan or are they going to hunt for a kill because i think roshan might be the order of business here yeah i mean the enemy aren't expecting it it's not a traditional early roche lineup i'm i completely agree that metro can do roche very early with the uh, the familiars plus the medallion but yeah there needs to be some form of response here from Zanatic and it's gonna be too late at this rate FN's rotating in you got Rakuzin nearby but Ice Blast this could be enough to set it up yeah it's However, only gonna land on Sharfik yeah unfortunately and the wave of terror does come through Hakon gonna get pounced up and dropped down Chronosphere is there but he's not able to do any damage to it Soul Assumption comes out onto FN but he will be able to shadow dance he's putting a lot of right clicks dark pack pounce up to the high ground will keep him safe remnant forward from the ember spirit he's gonna try and take down the sark but he'll get ravaged up and the dark pack will be there to finish off a sharfik that's three down for the side of aspera akashi looking to chase down the apathy as well and one last right click coming in from the slark and aspera scouted out by lb4 e triple kill going fn's way and a huge engagement for them 14 minutes in I was actually hesitant to, uh, to believe that Xanatic could have got there in time, but they proved me quite heavily wrong. I suppose I overestimated the damage that Aspira have, considering Medallion and Visage, but right now, well, Xanatic in the driver's seat in a big way. Consider we've already got components for what 
could actually be a Dagon coming on for the Queen of Pain. No Talisman, Staff of Wizardry. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder. I doubt it's any. I doubt it's a Force or a Yule. So that seems to be perhaps the build here, unless oh, it's no, only Ags. Yeah. And uh, she'll p pick up two more components of that. So 1,200 away from that point booster. And it is a very nice item, especially into the Ember Spirit. He does rely on that Flame Guard to be a little more survivable, but it being pure damage is a nice way to deal uh, with Sharfix Ember. Ice Blast going to fly out bottom, does hit on two, but no immediate follow-up coming out from Xantic as well. That engagement gives the Tidehunter the rise enough to pick up his Blink Dagger now. So this will be uh, certainly a pivotal uh, next few minutes in the game with what Xantic has picked up off that last engagement. Mm. The next few minutes, this could be the time for Xantic to start opening up on Tier 2s, get the rest of the Tier 1s, possibly. They can force the fights now. Aspera, they're behind in a big way. If Aspera even step out of position once, they're going to get punished. You consider the Ember only has brown boots and a drum. Yeah. That's nowhere near enough when you consider what the Queen of Pain has. Treads, uh, three out of four parts of a full Aghanims, Bottle and Null. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Sharfik been a little bit underwhelming on this Ember Spirit. We saw him take that one solo kill on the AA and feed his life to the Queen of Pain, as well as that first kill to the Queen of Pain. So she has been able to shut him down and find quite a bit of momentum uh, for herself. He is about 700 from that Aghanims now. The Apathy is going to farm up a stack here, has picked up the Buckler and his Vanguard. So it looks like it will be a Crimson Guard coming out from the Apathy. What are your thoughts on this item? I feel like there's too ma much magic damage from LB4E to warrant a Crimson Guard here. I could agree with you on that one. I mean, there's, there is a lot of magic damage here. The Queen of Pain, most importantly. But it does help up against the Slark. And the mm -hmm. Slark can just be a problem in these fights. It'll mitigate enough, maybe, for the Aspera lineup to deal with the other heroes and then deal with yeah. the Slark later on. Problem is, the Slark, the longer he's going to fight them, what damage he's going to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really would have liked to see a Blade Mail as opposed to this. I feel like it does a lot of work versus uh, the AA as well as the Queen of Pain, who aren't generally BKB builders. I mean, Queen of Pain usually does get that BKB, but probably third or fourth item. So, interesting pickup from the Apathy, and he is the highest net worth target on the Dire side. So, we'll see how that pans out for them. He does complete it up uh, at 17 and a half minutes in. Mm. Yeah, it's now going to be a case of how effective is it, considering right. it. The hack on will take quite the ice blast there. We do have a rotation up from the apathy onto this top lane. We could see a forced fight, but it seems mid. We'll get Sharfik trying to go aggressive on uh, Akashi, but in comes the swap. Stun. Sharfik in a lot of trouble. He might get caught here, but nope. It's going to be a sonic wave on nothing and a remnant away before the cold feet can fight. But in comes FN, trying to finish the job. Sharfik forced on the retreat. Now there goes his last remnant. If he uses this one, he's going to have no recourse. So a couple of right clicks will seal the deal. And that's a good pickup for FN. But Apathy is nearby. They popped the Crimson Guard and it did nothing. And in comes Hakon, looking to finish Akashi. The Ravage is the commit, though. And Zakon is in a lot of trouble. Yeah. But we'll finish off the Queen of Pain before one right that comes through from FN. And now you've only got the Apathy up against the Rise and FN. This is not a good fight for the Axe. He needs to get the hell out of Dodge. But he's not going to be able to escape this slug. Yep, he's going to be brought down. That's a triple kill going FN's way. Ice Blast going to fly out onto Vaxxar. It's going to shatter him as well. And it's a full five-man wipe for Aspera just for a Queen of Pain kill. And the Queen of Pain already with the three elements of the Aghanims and a thousand gold is not too far off of that Ags. And they're going to translate this into a tier one as well. And it looks like LB4E handily have this game in their control. This tower falls and that Aghanims is completed as well, I'll point out. And that gives, of course, a nice add to the burst damage and cooldown reduction, most importantly, for that Queen of Pain. Yeah. So we can see more impact, more aggression. And it, of course, does increase her mana capacity, which is one of the bigger problems with the Queen of Pain in the early game. Yeah, BKB comes out as well for FN. So he'll have free reign in this fight with that 10 second D uh, BKB duration as well as his Shadow Dance. And look for him to find some aggression at least onto these supports who are very poor from the side of Aspera. Rubik really has nothing to his name. Looking to build into an urn. Still needs the recipe for that. And only that medallion uh, for Metrum that was picked up quite a ways ago. Hmm. Well, part of me does wonder what Metrum can actually do with the next few minutes of this game considering yeah. the visage you generally with the visage want to get a very early ags you want to just be very impactful but mm -hmm. he's not had that kind of impact that we would normally expect the visage to have i mean we're yeah. at a 20 minute mark he's two three and two that's not enough 
Yeah, he hasn't been able to uh, contribute to many of these engagements, and I feel like the Apathy really should have been the tempo controller for Aspera here. He's been kind of content to farm up the jungle, farm up his Ancients, find his item progression, but he hasn't really found any pickoffs, and uh, kudos to LB4E for really balling up and not finding, uh, or not giving away any ideal situations uh, for this Axe to find uh, one or two hero pickoffs. Hmm. Well, now I suppose we have to consider what is Zanatic's next objective going to be, considering rotations could go towards this top tier one. If Zanatic forced this one and the fight goes poorly, that could easily be a tier two as well. Mm -hmm. How can Aspera respond to this? They've got hack on with a Mask of Madness. If they get a good Chronosphere and maybe kill uh, the Rise before he can get a good Ravage off, that might be the way to open a door for Aspera. But the most important thing to point out is there is a wild card for Aspera, and it's the Rubik of Vaxa. We really haven't seen much of him yet. Yeah, and he can be certainly a big influence. Mid lane Ice Blast as goes out as well as the Magic Missile. That's going to be uh, landing onto Sharfik as well as the Cold Feet proc, but he'll be just fine. Sharfik actually picking up Boots of Travel on this Ember Spirit. Means that, meanwhile, FN and the Ravage committed top lane from the Rise to finish off uh, Hakon's Void. I was watching that. They just got completely obliterated. But now in comes an aggressive charge from the Spirit into this mid lane. Zed, Zed JK going to get caught out by the looks of things. Will go down to a dunk. We still got uh, Rakuzin trying to deal with the lineup of Sharfik and the Apathy, but Akashi now rotates in. You've got the Rise. The entire combo is starting to come online, and Sharfik will fall to FN. Double kill. Godlike for FN. And this is just slowly becoming out of control for Aspera. They cannot deal with this. It's 22 and 10 at 21 minutes into this game, 22 minutes into this game, and the towers are just melting, the heroes are falling, they don't have any way to survive, they're getting a pick-off but losing two for their pick-off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, favorable trades being found everywhere for LB4E. Things are absolutely snowballing out of control, and it looks like they'll take this tier 2 completely unabated uh, in this mid lane. They are going to make rotations in with Vaxa as well as Hakon, and they do have this Chronosphere available to them, so they will glyph it and look to mount a defense, but things not looking uh, very promising here for Aspera with their Ember Spirit still down. Well, they need the Ember up, and they just can't take the fight without it. In comes an Ice Blast. That's going to hit on Apathy. Hakon does manage to get a good chrono, but the swap defensively buys FN enough time to get that shadow down off. In comes the Queen of Pain. The Sonic Wave does doing so much damage. It's how you've got FN just tearing everyone else to, up to pieces. It's three for one right now for a VS. And a VS you expect to die in these fights. Hell, it's not enough yet. Metrum will fall to Akashi. Maybe look for even Vaxa. Got to be careful with that Tower Aggro, however, and Akashi's going to have to back out. Triple kill, however, for the Queen of Pain. How do you stop her? Yeah, it's uh, between the Slark and the Queen of Pain, it's really hard pressed for Aspera to find the right target to go on. Go on either of them, and the other one is doing so much work. Three man Sonic Wave there from Akashi, and just absolutely uh, going balls deep with that Agatims. They will be able to jump into the Roshan Pit, double damage rune going the way of FN. Chilling Touch is here as well with the right clicks. Gush gonna lower the armor of the Roshan momentarily, and uh, they should be able to take this down in due time. Yeah, especially with that TD rune. I'm, I don't see any contest here. They can't really afford to contest Roshan either. So this will be Aegis, most likely on FN. And then I think we might be looking at another tier 2 or possibly even a tier 3 tower as the order of business. Yeah, the blade mail now does come out for the Apathy, but I fear it's a little bit too little too late with the BKB already up for FN. He's going to pass to the high ground. Hakon's going to catch him out. He will be able to shadow blade away, however, and Sharfik looking to chase down ZJK as well as the Rise. They'll choose to go on the AA here. Ice Blast is going to fly out, glancing blow before ZJK dies, and he's going to be very disciplined, pop his cold feet so that that Ice Blast wasn't stolen. FN still running around behind the enemy lines will be caught out and dunked up it's just an Aegis however he doesn't really have any support inbound Akashi can look to find a big sonic wave here he will pop his BKB and look to man up sonic wave onto three scream of pain is there as well the apathy dropping low but FN gonna be the first to fall Akashi may feed his life over next and a little bit too much hubris coming out from LB4E after that Roshan they feed over their two highest worth targets in the game yeah, FN just decided to go up onto that ledge and he just didn't gain anything. He hung around, he lost his Aegis, then down goes the Queen of Pain, even after a good Sonic Wave. It, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And that is the kind of mistake that can cost Zanatic a hell of a lot. I mean, that's going to spike the graph. Sure, it's a net worth lead of just shy of 20k as for Zanatic, but that's going to hurt. That's going to at least give, what, 3k towards the enemy lineup. 
Yeah, and it certainly did, bringing it back down to around 14k in the way of net worth and about 12 in the way of experience. So certainly this game isn't completely out of reach for Aspera, but they are going to need to find some crucial items here in the mid game. Hakon still only sitting on Treads, Aquila, and that Mask of Madness. He will be able to find his Maelstrom here shortly with the Gloves of Haste and 1600 gold, but they're going to need a little more than that. Sharfik on the Ember Spirit, as we mentioned earlier on, pretty underwhelming and hasn't found much in the way of item progression beyond his Boots of Travel. Hmm. Akashi's prepared up for this top lane as well. Has a Dagon, so I'm gonna be interested to see how this actually stands out. Sonic Wave is gonna be committed, and it's a complete air ball, unfortunately. And do we see a turnaround potential? Yes, we do. This is the punishment that Aspera need to keep leveling. If they can bring down Akashi here, that's gonna be perfect. But is she gonna be able to blink out? No. That's pretty damn good. And the stolen Sonic Wave gets returned to FN, but FN can still chew apart that little bit like yesterday's leftovers. Yeah, and uh, he, the Rubik, knowing he was dropping there, just decided to spend that Sonic Wave as he would uh, lose it but either way nice return kill going the way of fn akashi yeah a little bit a little bit sloppy on that engagement does feed her life over that's a big kill going the way of aspera certainly a trade at this point in the game that they'll take any day what's your opinions on this dagon pickup though i mean it's a dagon up against say an orchid or a sheepstick yeah orchid much more utility offered there uh, dagon nice when you're snowballing on any hero really but up against the flame guard up against some tankier heroes like the axe even the backtrack possibility from hack on the orchid is just so much more effective it can stop a chrono it can stop the remnant out from sharfik if he if she has an orchid there she kills the ember uh, no doubt so definitely a questionable pickup coming out from akashi yeah. It's it's just a really odd choice, and we may have to ask him at some point what what his kind of mindset was for picking that up. But we might see a bit of a scuffle going on down on this bottom lane. FN getting very aggressive, seen out by Sharfik, going to drop the chains and mess around with that a bit. Going to force a dark pack though at least. Apathy kind of blink forward, oh, looks for the kill, but can't quite get the call onto the slark. But important items now starting to come up for Aspera as Oh, Slark going very aggressive, poking and prodding at Apathy, that's a little bit <laughs> overzealous possibly. <laughs> Just getting some battle. use out of that extra right click from the Shadow Blade, I guess, but either way, if I'm going to back off, and wisely so, is about to jump headlong into four from Aspera. It looks like it'll be a BKB build as opposed to the Maelstrom uh, for Hakon. Probably a, a little bit annoyed from this AA Ice Blast that he's been catching quite often. He picks up that Ogre Axe, still is 1100 away from the recipe. And uh, it's going to be a, a nice pickup for Aspera, but I fear it's not enough firepower for them uh, to start bringing down some of these heroes from LV4E. No, I'm in agreement with you with that one. They need some more damage. I can understand why he needs to protect himself, but it'll be a mid tier one in favor of Aspera here for most likely a uh, bottom tier two if they're not careful. It's going to be a tier one for a tier two exchange. Yeah. We've got the Battle Fury now online for the Ember, but I, I think it might be a little bit too late. Mm -hmm. Definitely so. 28 minutes in is not going to be the most influential item. Does help you farm, certainly, but not sure that they're going to allow them to get to this late in the game where that Battle Fury uh, will come into play. Ice Pass going to be caught once again by Hakon, and he's an absolute magnet for these things. Akashi's blink is a little bit short onto the low ground. Won't be able to aggress towards that void. She may have been scouted out briefly by these familiars, but will back off to safety. And Sharfik uh, does have a defensive net remnant at the ready in the jungle, so can back out and will proceed to do so. Hmm. I, just the use of remnants there just to survive, it's going to be what's necessary. Mm -hmm. We need to see split pushing coming from the Ember Spirit in this case, and the more split pushing we can get, the better. But Sharfik's going to possibly get caught out. He's going to have to remnant away. That's two remnants used. That's the third remnant down right now. Sharfik needs to be very careful with his investment of, re of the remnants at this point. If he gets caught without a remnant, Slark will kill him. Yeah, very nice first hit bash as well. And Slark is only, if he doesn't save for buyback, an Orb of Venom away from a full Scotty. 29 minutes in, in addition to his Basher, BKB, and Shadow Blade. So that's looking very scary for Aspera. They'll pick up another BKB on their Axe, the Apathy here. But again, touching on the point that they do lack a little bit of damage here. And I worry for their ability to bring down... In, in particular, this tw level 21 Slark, 2,000 HP on him, and he's only got the one ultimate orb. And there's the full Scotty, now 2,600 uh, HP on the Slark with Strength Treads toggled. This is quite the show of force here for uh, Zanatic and the Slark. If they can get the pickoffs, this is going to hurt, and Vaxxer might be on the receiving end if he's not careful. FN playing very aggressively, getting quite a good bit of vision. Thinking about mid lane? Ooh, thinking twice of it. 
I think there's going to be a case of the um, top tier two, though. This will most likely go down. However, they do have to still contend with the Queen of Pain and the Slark if they want to defend it. Yeah, and there is a Glyph available, so they can mount a defense if they choose to do so. But it doesn't look like they're willing to contest at this point all. I'm marching down that bottom lane. Roshan still not up for, at minimum, a minute and a half. So a little bit of an odd decision from Aspera. But they'll feed over that Tier 2 uh, with relative ease to Xantic. Uh, just a kill like that. It does uh, do quite a few nice things with Xantic. If they can just maintain Tower of Vantage, mm -hmm. they're going to have a much easier time. However, flip side of the coin, Vaxa and uh, Metrum, they are pushing that bottom lane. When they do have the backup of all three cores, this could be a scuffle around that bottom tier too, and it could be what Aspera need to claw their way back into this game. Yeah, they did walk down this bottom lane here, so not sure that this ward would have scouted anyone out. So, could be a nice bait coming out from Aspera. They will rotate it, Sharfik into the lane now, so he has been spotted out as well. And because no one was defending that tier two, perhaps... Uh, LB4E is privy to this, but they will rotate in FN under the cover of his Shadow Blade. He's going to look to find one. Uh, there is a defensive remnant available behind this medium camp, though, for Sharpik, and he should be just fine to push this wave up. Yeah, he's just going to be able to fire him in the way, but there is some threat to keep in mind here. FN, very aggressive, does get into that Shadow Dance before the Chronosphere lands, and that's going to save his ass right there. But the ball will catch him afterwards. They need some kind of defense here. They need something to catch and keep him alive, and they will do so with a stop. Rakuza going to possibly give away his life, but in comes the Tide. He gets masked before he can get the Rabbit off, and everyone's in a BKB, so he's not going to be able to get a good Rabbit either way. They'll pull before they get the Rabbit. That's two by zero right now in terms of kills. And Still, Akashi needs to get the hell out of dodge. Axe could dunk FN right now. We'll get the call. Down goes the slot. This is perfect. This is exactly what Aspera needs. And the aggression is not over yet. In comes uh, Hakon looking to bring down ZJK. And with those familiars landing, there's going to be absolutely no escape. That's four for zero in favor of Aspera. Yeah, absolutely way too overzealous from FN there. Despite getting swapped out and surviving, he wasn't able to commit any of his damage or toolkit towards that fight. And you see the power of the lineup of LB4E being totally mitigated without the Slark there. A huge sonic wave coming in from Akashi, but just no follow-up. And as you mentioned, the BKBs got off in time to bring down the Rise Tidehunter. So... Uh, no Ravage there committed and very nice engagement for Aspera. When the Tide does respawn, they will have the Ravage at the ready though. So Aspera need to be careful to take their spoils and back off. Call's going to be a little bit early onto Rakuzin. Jump forward, Scream of Pain is there. C Slide of Fist Searing Chains though onto two. Rakuzin dropping very low. The Apathy is going to be swapped back in and the Ravage will connect onto two with the Sonic Wave. They'll bring them down. And as I mentioned, they needed to be able to extricate themselves from that situation but overstaying their welcome and feeding over uh, their axe and their ember af after what was probably the best engagement they've had all game yeah that's about as good a fight as they could hope for wait for the opponent to make an over aggressive mistake and punish it so it's going to at least put the graph in a slight 10k lead for Zanatic in its current state and experience wise 5k experience lead that's quite the fall from the 15k lead that it was to begin with so certainly Zanatic need to be careful to not lose too many more cores considering Aspera are still more than capable of winning this game yeah definitely so it looks like a hex will be built into for Akashi. That'll be a very nice item, especially as these BKB durations start to dwindle down uh, for Aspera, but both of them are pretty healthy. The Axe is sitting at 9 seconds, the Voids as well at 9, so things looking decent uh, thus far for those couple, of course, for Aspera, and hopefully they'll be able to find some item progression here. Still really no damage on Hakon's Void, uh, unfortunately, and FN gonna look for more here and still try to widen that net worth gap at the top. Not gonna find anything currently in that mid lane. They really need to get some more damage on this Void. He's going for what I believe to be the Maelstrom at this point, but the later you go in the game, the less effective Maelstrom is. Right. Yeah, certainly so, especially with BKBs up, it is magic damage, so... Uh, Ice Blast is going to fly out just for scouting purposes. Sharfik is in the top lane and can be picked off here, but no yeah. silence uh, for him. He's going to throw a slight of Fist Searing Chains into the Rise, jump forward, Scream of Pain will be there. He'll Remnant out, however, to base and not gonna meet, uh, mean any aggression afterwards. Blink picked up now by the Rubik and something you mentioned earlier on that we really haven't seen the fruit of this pick from Aspera and perhaps now with that positioning tool he will be able to steal some more influential spells. 
Stealing a Ravage would be good. Get, he's had one Sonic Wave so far, but yeah. Ravage is good. So is the Ice Blast. Those are the two that he really wants to grab. Magic Missile is good, but like, compared to what is available for Zanatic, it pales in comparison. As in comes the Ice Blast onto the Roshan. Are they really going to try to force this Roshan after the Ice Blast? In comes the Sonic Wave. That's going to do so much damage. Yeah, this Aspera is looking a to very back bad off. fight for, uh, for Aspera right now. In comes the Chronosphere, however, from Hakon. Going to buy some time, but the Dagon's going to bring down the Ember Spirit. And Akashi certainly going to most likely help themselves to the Roshan now off the back of that. So it will flourish. Yeah, Familiars are going to scout this out. They'll take this with relative ease. No denial uh, being committed there by the Familiars. FN picks up the Aegis. He'll pounce up to the high ground and get forced down. Looking for blood, but not going to find anything as all of Aspera has backed into their base but yeah staying a little bit too long after that very nice ice blast by the aa and a big sonic wave coming out from akashi yeah that sonic wave in combination with an ice blast that's huge and this of course is an ice blast with an agonyms it's it's insane that damage potential there is no way to escape from it Yep, and BKB no longer saves you from that. Smoke rotation looking to wrap here from Aspera. They will get popped from Akashi, but they'll find her with the call. This will be an easy kill onto the Queen of Pain. Dunk is there. Ice Pass only going to hit on one. Ravage connects onto Metrum. They'll find a trade in the Visage, but thus far, uh, with the Ember not down, they still can look to find a high ground push here. Anchor Smash being queued up. They will bring down one of the Familiars. And 100 gold going the tides way. FN standing on the high ground with his BKB at the ready as well as that Aegis as the battering ram. And he'll take this tier 3 for free. Yeah, it's the power of the stuff. He's just left on that high ground. Apathy tries to jump forward, but now comes the turnaround. The bash is there. BKB up by FN. Forcing the BKB of Apathy as well. Swap back from Rakuzen. This could be good, but in comes the damage from the Rubik. Try to help out, but it's, they get the kill on the AA. It's not going to be enough, however. Apathy almost goes down to the Magic Missile instead. will go down to the right click from FN. And FN now going toe to toe with Hakon as well as Sharpik. And they just can't do that. They invest the Chronosphere, trying to bring down the Slug. But Rakuzen is there. Catches the Torn. That's a Torn on three. That's about as as it gets, now comes the spirit bomb from Sharpik. They're gonna cut everyone. That's a five for nothing. Yeah, FN gonna look to fall here as well, and that is huge. That's five plus an Aegis going down for a spare. They only lose a tier three. That is a huge swing going their way. Nice chrono there by Hack on. Even better, blink forward and call on the three from Apathy. And good synergy of abilities there from Aspera. Uh, they're showing why they still have the grit to come out with a win in this one. Yeah, I, I just want to watch the graphs. The graphs are about to take a snow dive, mm -hmm. it seems. Yeah, currently was about that 15k net worth lead will take a nice dive downwards and the experience now at about 5k is more or less negligible 37 minutes in. Yeah, the experience was negligible. It's the gold that I'm trying yeah. to keep an eye on. Because that that's, was one point up to over a 15,000 gold lead. Mm -hmm. It's now around Haste. 10. That, that's ridiculous. The kind of swing we've had so far considering the lead the Zanatic had. And, well... Yep. If they keep making mistakes like that, Aspera can handily take this game. We've seen that. Yeah, losing their Queen of Pain there very early up on the high ground certainly hindered uh, their ability to do work in that team fight, and uh, they'll they'll pay dearly uh, for walking up to the high ground despite losing Akashi there. So Ghost Scepter also picked up by Vaxa now, so perhaps able to find an even better uh, spell steal in the next one. However, the hex has been fully completed by Akashi at the, the side shop, and that'll be a very nice item up against a Spera, albeit there are a couple BKB, still seven seconds on the Axe and the Void. Well, in comes a nice blast, looking for Sharpik, but there's going to be some follow-up. In comes the damage from the Queen of Pain. That's going to be enough to shatter Sharpik, but now comes the turnaround. The stolen Sonic Wave apathy manages to clean up the kill. It's a Queen of Pain. Will it be a kill onto the Ember? He's got the Ember Guard up. That's buying him the time. It's going to time out. He's going to survive. Yeah, massive misstep from Akashi. Feeding her life over again. There's no buyback available for 60 seconds. Doesn't look like Espera will be able to translate this into an objective immediately hereafter as there are still three tier twos up for LB4E, but continuously feeding over these kills is going to mean a lot of ability for a comeback for a spare here, albeit there is now a refresher on the Rise Tide Hunter. Yes, this refresher could make or break the game. It's going to be the linchpin. Can he get the good Ravages? If he can get the Ravages before or after the BKBs and he's still got a healthy enough team, this can finally be Rax in favor of uh, Zanatic. 
if, unless they lose any more. However, if the Queen of Pain keeps falling, the pickoff's not going so well, it really does hurt. And look at the experience graph. It's now on the side of a Spira for the first time in, what, 30 minutes? That's a pretty significant amount of time. Yeah, definitely so, and I feel like you touched on the biggest point of the last 10 minutes here, and as good as LB4E has been, the ability to break high ground up against a Chronosphere, an Axe, as well as that Ember Spirit Slide of Fist Bam is really difficult, and FN and crew not able to find that, but they will smoke up here, looking for an engagement off the fresh pickup of the ref Refresher, and the Abyssal Blade on FN Slurk. But with the Abyssal Blade, this could equally be a linchpin item. Mm -hmm. Refreshing an Abyssal Blade that were not there before. Have a smoke, and they're going to have to walk up into the high ground. But look at this lineup from Aspira. They are all there. They are ready. In comes Ravage number one. Refresher, but now it's stolen. It's a stolen Ravage. This could be huge. Look at the Ice Cloth. Don't shatter the, uh, the wound in the axe. But Stolen Ravage, not going to be anywhere near enough. They cannot respond to this. Down goes the Vision. f on a double. You've got the Ember charging around, trying to get out of dodge. and. Well, buyback by uh, Hakon. He needs to get a good chrono at this point, though. He's yeah. got a Demon Edge. What's his investment going to be? Because his item choices, his items are everywhere. Yeah, it's a little bit of a cookie cutter build. FN standing on the high ground looking for someone to overcommit. And there is backdoor regeneration here, so he needs to be careful and not to get caught out. But Axe is down, so they really don't have any reliable disable other than that. Chrono, Rakuzen, going to back him up now with the swap at the ready. And this should be a set of racks easily forfeit over from Aspera. Yeah, they're going to go aggressively, however, they're going to go straight for Hakon. They burst down that void, it might be all over. He'd have to die back. He's got no way back into this fight. They're going to finish off the Rubik, force Sharpik back. This might be GG. I don't think they have any way to defend this anymore. They're going to at least lose their full set of racks in the mid lane. And Zanatic just having a powerful show of force. Yeah, no I buybacks they... for anyone here from Aspera. So definitely, as you mentioned, encroaching upon GG territory. Yeah, th this is just a complete turnaround considering uh, Aspera were slowly coming back. But they just couldn't manage it off the back of that smoke, it seems. And, well, this it could be a tier 3 top lane as well. We've still got the slight of fist spam coming in, but this is one cleaver, no... Well, he's got the Daedalus, but no crits at all at this point. It's it's unlucky more than anything. Oh, there's a crit. However, Shafik gets swapped back. They can bring down the Ember. Oh, that oh, might be please. it. Buy back by the Ember. He's going to try to come back into this one and do what he can, but they lose Metrum as well. Shafik, can he do anything? Can he get anything? As FN, oh, he's being aggressive. But FN, that's not your base. You've got to respect that. As the tier 3 falls, Axe gets the taunt onto Rakuza, and down goes the Vengeful Spirit, but we expect the Venge to die. Shafik, however, will die back. 112 seconds here from flying for an FN. He wants more. He wants blood. He's going to try to go for the axe. That's not the easiest target. And a, sw and a steal onto Dark Pack by Vaxa. Can Vaxa do anything with this? I don't really think so. And FN's going to disengage, reset, and possibly go again. Yeah, so surprisingly enough, Aspera only losing that lane of Rax and the tier 3s. I guess LB4E a little bit too much thirst from them. FN okay. going to re-engage here. Blade Mail popped by Apathy, and he doesn't have the Shadow Dance. Needs to be careful. He's going to get Telekinesed up. There is a BKB available to him now. He will Dark Pact it up, but he's going to get Chronosphere by Hakon, who's respawned over all this time. Ice Blast will fly through and hit on 3. The Ravage will be there, as well as a big Anchor Smash coming from the Rise. Everyone dropping really low from the Ice Blast, but there's no further follow-up here. And he will be able to bring down the Rubik. However, it looks like the Rise will feed over his life for this one. And Ravage is down. Soul Assumption going to fly through. He'll throw a gush into the Apathy, but he should get dunked shortly here. And he will. And they will save their racks. And a little bit too much from LB4E throwing bodies at Aspera at this point. But if they need to do it to hold their racks. If they yeah. don't throw bodies at the enemy, they lose their racks. FN, he buys back, he comes back in. His slack is relentless. He just wants the buildings. In comes the TPs from the Kuzin. You've got uh, Kashi here as well. ZJK. This is going to be a second full lane of racks. Yeah. Big, big problems now for the Aspera lineup. Yeah, no buyback except for the Visage from Aspera either. He's alive currently, and it doesn't seem like they'll be able to contest this bottom lane either. So, encroaching upon GG territory, and as you mentioned, unfortunately, Aspera were beginning to come back here, but one poor engagement off the Smoke Gang has pretty much spelled the crumbling of their base. The BKBs are popped here. One last attempt for a defense from the Apathy. Big Sonic Wave, Ice Blast on two as well. Axe is the first to fall. Metrum gonna be next, and he'll be brought down to that Dark Pack of the Slark. 46 to 30. 
30 is your score. Mega creeps up here now. Pounce forward onto Sharfik. Cold Feet will be there as well as the Hex. One more right click from Akashi. Finishes off Ember Spirit and GG impending. And there it is. Voxa going to get up that Shadow Dance and we'll be able to TP away. But actually finished off to the Magic Missile. And overall, very well played from Elbor, LB4E. That's quite the show of force. And if they can keep performing to this kind of level, then if they can get their potential throws under control, I reckon they can go quite far in the Brighton League. Yeah, definitely so. And you mentioned it. I mean, the only qualifier, to open qualifier team thus far to even win a game in this group stage, and they've won two. They are tied up uh, with Album Sheet and Aspera and London Conspiracy right now. I believe there's a four-way tie in this group, so definitely the tightest one thus far, guys. That ends our coverage for the day on Bryden League. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely follow us over on Hefla TV on all your social media, and of course at Mr. Underscore Black Adder and at Mr. MRP Underscore Dota. On Twitter tomorrow, we'll be starting again with Bright and Lead coverage at 15 CET. So thanks for joining us, guys. And Black, any last words on the game? I look to see you guys at the 15 CET game. I believe it'll be myself and Mike, Mike Loris casting yeah. at. Yeah, so that's uh, Album Sheet versus LB4E. Definitely will be some major playoff implications uh, tomorrow in those games. So see you guys then. GG.